It's Mike's Daily Podcast. You ever work somewhere that when they Mike's Daily Podcast get like utensils for you to eat with, you know, the plastic where they get the stuff that you wouldn't use at a fair? It's like really you can't like the fork. You try and use it and it just buckles under the weight. You can't pick up anything. Any food and you lose it on the floor. Isn't that great? Mike's Daily Podcast. When your company tries to cut corners, it's the cutting corners corner, but in a bad way. Yes. Mike's you need Daily a plasticware podcast. that has some heft to it. Yeah. A plastic fork will only work if when you go down the with the fork when you bring it down to get the lettuce that it actually stabs the lettuce and doesn't break in your hand. Just something I observed. Hey, it's FF episode 2864, 2864, Cafe Anyway, where we don't have any plasticware. We have silverware, or something close to it anyway. And at Cafe Anyway, in podcast Valley, to in the last place on earth in the land of Ameritopica, we have Topicas. Lots of them, like Alaska. They're, they're going to take a stand and do something. Now, I took a cruise in Alaska when I was just a kid. It was the year before my grandma passed. And I don't know if she knew what was, what was going on. And maybe this was the last year she had with me. But she decided to take my dad and I on a cruise ship, cruise in Alaska. And it was an amazing experience. It was the early 80s. And I, I took pictures, I took slides, is how far back this is. I took slides, which didn't even, I turned them into slides, you know? Did I have a slide projector? No. What was the point? Anyway, cafe, anyway, it's a beautiful trip if you can make it. But I don't know if you can make it now. And here's today's podcast picture. The podcast picture will feature something from recently. Speaking of ships and stuff, we'll go to Point Richmond. Or the Richmond Marina, that area was there recently, and I'll post a podcast picture, a cool pos- podcast picture from that excursion. But each year, see it at mikesdailypodcast.com, that Mike excursion. Each year, a crush of tourists arrive in Alaska. Basil never went to Alaska, the late great Basil the Boxer, but he did make it to the Richmond Marina. We went on a nice walk there a couple times. Each year, a crush of tourists arrive in Alaska's capital city on cruise ships to see wonders like the fast-diminishing Mendenhall Glacier. They fly into... Juneau is my ridiculous random post for you. Now, long-simmering tensions over Juneau's tourism boom are coming to an ahead over a new voter initiative aimed at giving residents a respite from the influx. A measure that would ban cruise ships. That's pretty interesting. With 250 or more passengers from docking in Juneau on Saturdays, qualified for the October 1st municipal ballot, setting the stage for a debate about how much tourism is too much in a city that is experiencing firsthand the impacts of climate change. The measure would also ban ships on July 4th, a day when locals flock to a downtown Micropedia in Zanica. Parade. And this from the fine people at the Associated Press. I remember we did... Yeah, we did stop there on the cruise. And I remember we went to the Juno Museum. And we did actually dock there. I remember we were at the dock. So they're going to try and limit that. With all the ships and the people, a lot of people. After a two-year... rip someone a new one. A two-year pandemic lull... Cruise ship passenger numbers rose sharply in Juno, hitting a record of more than 1.6 million in 2023. People, people, what's up with the cruising? It's time to just maybe not as much. It went crazy. Everybody, they did the revenge vacationing with cruising. Under this year's schedule, September 21st will be the first day since early May with no large ships in town. Yo, the mic tip. 
If the Juno Initiative passes, this is my mic tip, it will impact other smaller communities in Southeast Alaska because the ships generally on trips originating in Seattle or Vancouver, that's the one that we did, Vancouver, Canada, will have to go somewhere if they can't dock in Juno on Saturdays. And that's fascinating. Also fascinating is that a guy named Michael Klein, he's a California resident, he detailed in an op- like scavenger hunt. in an op-ed that I found in my scavenger hunt of interesting emails sent to me, the detailed the, the nightmarish experience he endured after taking his injured child to the hospital and daring to ask for the price of a recommended procedure. Instead of disclosing their prices, the hospital was openly hostile and even called Child Protective Services on them. The news bleed section. That bit of news there from CRC Advisors. But yes, they were going to call CPS on him. Michael was right to ask for the price up front. He later found out that the optional procedure the hospital was recommending could cost nearly $10,000 and would not be covered by his insurance. For over three years, the hospital price transparency rule which requires hospitals to publicly post their prices has been in effect. However, across the country, a majority of hospitals, a majority of them, wow, shit's wow, continue to flout the rule. Yes, 66% of hospitals are doing that. This according to the most recent report by patientrightsadvocate.org, the nation's leading voice in the fight for healthcare price transparency. Yeah, I went and got some tests done the other day. I didn't ask how much it was going to cost. I oh, insurance will cover it. And then I got a bill. Eh. A pretty big bill. You know what? We're outside a cafe anyway. I don't know if we have big bill. Oh, no, we're still inside. <laughs> what? When are we going to go outside? I'm feeling a little claustrophobic in here. All right, we're going to stick around for just a, a minute. Before we go outside My wonderful cat Rocky the cat Brought in A mouse On the weekend Life Grand As if to say Thank you Mike For letting me hang out with you In the coldest room in the house During these super hot days We had recently Hey Hey, no problem, Rocky. Do me a favor and don't bring in dead things as we go outside a cafe anyway. Now, in Podcaster Valley, the last place on earth, Podcaster Valley 10, in the land of Ameritopica, having a little uh, root beer. Awesome. Oh, wait, I'm not having the root beer because it hasn't been poured for me yet. Now it is. Oh, Mike, I made delicious root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Take around now. I'll cut you. Uh, what's in the root beer? I put delicious root beer in the root beer. Oh, boy. Delicious root. That's good for a change. And then somebody's going to say something nice about Everybody me. Everybody make some noise. Woo! Bringing to you. Thank you. Live. Thank you. From. I'll cut you. Podcaster Valley Mont. Yes. Mike's Daily Podcast. Whoa. Whoa. And look who else is here. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? I'm my horse dealer. It's a disgruntled player. Tell you what. What? All this stuff you're talking about today is very fascinating and interesting. I'm sorry about the dead mouse. You know, mice, cats just love to get them. And I'm not saying that, you know, a, a mouse, a dead mouse here and there, because when they multiply, that's not a good thing. I wish they wouldn't have to die, but, you know, I'm just trying to be fair and balanced is about all this. Fair and unbalanced. Okay. Well, I guess close enough. Then. <laughs> all right, let's go. What? Do you think about anything we covered today? Here is the phone number. Oh, and also use that phone number because right now it's time for the Mike Matthews New Tune Feud. Yes. 
So we didn't do one on the last podcast, but I ended up looking through my uh, email a little bit more closely, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And I saw, in fact, I did have, I did have some new songs that were sent to me. So I'm going to play them for you now. You tell me which one you like the best. And we can't play a, bu- a, a huge amount of the song because then we'll get dinged by YouTube. But the first song is from Daniel G. Harmon. He was on the podcast a couple of years ago. We met the late, great Basil the Boxer twice. And here he is with RB. And they just released something called Small Eruptions. Here is a little bit of that song, Small Eruptions. <laughs> a master craftsman of working class art, Daniel G. Harmon. And in fact, you can hear the several interviews that I did with him at my website, mikesdailypodcast.com under the home button there at the upper left hand corner. Click on that. You'll see interviews and then click on A through F for because he's uh, listed as Daniel. I went by the first name, Daniel G. Harmon at mikesdailypodcast.com and then the second song for you that was sent to me mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com is from neo 90s alt pop artist Vicky Minor she uh, FKA Valors is an award nominated neo 90s alt pop artist proudly from Saskatoon and now partially based in Toronto She's earned nominations for awards like Rock Pop Artist of the Year at the Sask Music Awards three years in a row and Pop Artist of the Year at the Western Canadian Music Awards. So let's hear a little bit of her new song, Vicky Minor. Here's a little bit of her song called Cool. The way you love to dance is to me on brands and chicks are flushing, make me flushes, let me just know they go. That's Vicky Minor, spelled with uh, two K's. Vicky. Wait, is that not? This is usually C K Y, isn't it? So there she is, Vicky Minor, and her song "Cool." Okay. So which one did you like better, Vicky Minor or Daniel G. Harmon? Let me know. Here's the phone number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway Hotline. Area code five one zero two two eight. Four six four zero. Will you shut up? Liberty Nation Freedom Foam for All. And with all things Mike's Daily Podcast, we go now to the mainframe and hear from A Frame. Here it is, the finale, and all the other information you need to know about Mike's Daily Podcast. But if you get offended, that's the way the cookie crumbles. No. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.